This episode of the Thursday Night Club is proudly presented by ThriftBooks, the largest online seller of used books in the world. Read more, spend less. Previously on the Thursday Night Club. I start getting into the Christmas spirit right around Labor Day, and I think that's still way too late. I'm convinced that I can figure out a way to keep the Christmas feeling all year long. I think a lot of this comes from how my family always looked at Christmas in two ways as something we did for each other, and as something we did for our community. This year, though, the club decided that they would work on their own projects to share the Christmas spirit by giving a helping hand to others. Of course, this being the Thursday Night Club, they had to make a contest out of it. (laughs) All right, all right. Is anyone going to update the group on their progress? No. No. Wow, the competition's getting cutthroat around here. But let me tell you something, Izzy. Donating marrow is a life-saving gift. So, you'll let me know when you're ready to schedule this? I was hoping we could do it tomorrow. Tomorrow? Brandy, I am happy to see you. As I pass the basketball courts, I thought I felt someone walking behind me. Wait, what? Some guy's been following you? What does he look like? Please, Randy, don't go into vigilante mode on me. Drama Initiative and Jale and Warren Trepp present the Thursday Night Club, an audio drama based on the book by Stephen Manchester. As I'm sure you figured out by now, I'm a Christmas freak. While lots of people say they wish they could maintain the Christmas spirit all year round, I actually believe it's possible. Even if doing so has proven a little elusive so far. It's not like I'm against the other holidays, though. Memorial Day? Big fan. Fourth of July? Save me the best seat for the fireworks. Columbus Day? Okay, I really don't have much a feeling about Columbus Day one way or the other. But if I were going to name a second favorite holiday, and mind you, it is not a close second, it would be Thanksgiving. There are only a couple of times a year when the whole extended family gets together, and Thanksgiving is one of them. So that's the best reason. My mom's stuffing and my uncle's apple pie are tied for second. And even though it makes a lot of my relatives cringe, I love when we go around the table saying what we're most thankful for that year. I always get a little lump in my throat, especially when it's my little cousin's turns. And then there's the whole thing about Thanksgiving being the official launch of the Christmas season. Now, as you know, we get started just a little bit earlier in the Cabral household. But I love the fact that the Christmas movies start showing up on television and you hear Christmas music everywhere you go. It's the sign that the holiday is really on its way. Since I've been in college, Thanksgiving has also signaled the final lap of the fall semester. There's only a week or so after Thanksgiving before we kick into heavy finals review mode, so we go from a nice cozy four-day weekend to lots and lots of all-nighters. The finals are looming, and they aren't going to wait for anyone, especially if you're trying to keep the recruiters interested, if you know what I mean. Then there's the matter of something else looming this year for the Thursday Night Club. Ava, Izzy, Kevin, and Randy got back from this particular Thanksgiving break knowing that they only had a few more weeks before they had to present what they'd done for the contest. Remember, please, that the contest was not my idea. They brought that completely onto themselves. I've just been encouraging them for a while to incorporate some good deeds into their Christmas plans. However, they did decide to make it a contest, which meant that each of them was bent on winning the contest, which was, you know, a little outside of the spirit of the undertaking. 
regardless, there was less than a month left before the big Christmas Eve presentation. Ava has been volunteering at the retirement home for several weeks now. She was doing her best to contribute there, but the sameness of the conversations she was having with the residents were starting to get to her. Ava has an issue with people living small lives. And talking to the elderly about the weather and soap operas wasn't doing anything to help in that regard. Izzy's book drive was going just fine. She had a drop box in the union and another couple in town, one at the dry cleaner and another at the convenience store a couple of blocks off campus. She would go every couple of days to empty the boxes, and she was putting together quite a haul. Izzy hadn't made a pickup for nearly a week, though. And it wasn't because of the holiday. Right before the break, she had done something truly amazing and donated her bone marrow to help a very sick four-year-old boy. From what I hear, bone marrow donation can leave you extremely sore, and Izzy has been in a fair amount of pain since the procedure. The break couldn't have come at a better time for her, and her parents pampered her the entire weekend, but she was still feeling pretty miserable when she got back. Kevin's bikeathon to provide a college scholarship was scheduled for the week between the end of classes and the start of finals. Not the ideal timing, since this is Massachusetts and it can get awfully cold and snowy, but those were the only dates that would work for all of the riders. Fortunately, the weatherman cooperated, and they were predicting temperatures in the high 50s and low 60s the entire week. Randy? Well, Randy was still refining his plans over the Thanksgiving break. By which I mean, he didn't have any plans at all. It was starting to get to him. I know this because he left me a long, pained message about it on my phone. But there was the possibility that he was just not going to be able to come up with anything. Randy can be a real goof at times. But it's a little weird that he's got so locked up about this. He kept saying that he was sure an idea was going to run into him. But by Thanksgiving, that close encounter had not happened. By the way, just before the break, the Thursday night club held its own Thanksgiving dinner. It was a Tuesday night because everyone was going home the next day, but as we discussed, the Thursday night thing was really only ceremonial at this point anyway. Okay, here we are at our final Friendsgiving together. No, oh, what do you mean final? Well, we're all moving on from this think tank being sent out to the real world. To take it by storm and rule it with an iron fist. Oh, dear God. <laughs> okay, but this doesn't have to be our last Friendsgiving, right? I mean, we're all likely to wind up somewhere in the Boston area. And... Hey, I am going wherever the action is. And by action, I mean job, any job, truly, of any kind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hadn't actually thought about it that way. Oh, well, now I have something else to be sad about. What you should really be sad about are the food items that Randy has offered up to our okay, table. Okay, okay, not so fast with the critique there, Ava. I'll have you know that in some cultures, canned sardines are considered a rare delicacy. Oh, really? And, if prepared correctly, yeah. yes, they can play a strong leading role in this theatrical banquet of treats you and Ava have prepared. <laughs> and they were 99 cents at the supermarket, right? <laughs> theatrical <laughs> banquet of treats? You brought canned sardines and two bags of candy corn left over from Halloween. It's my favorite venture. Vegetable, Kevin. You know that. Besides, candy corn pairs well with everything. That 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 is true. Yes, and I wouldn't talk, buddy. It's Mr. Spam. Yeah, spam. Hey, 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 hey. Do you know how much people love spam in Hawaii? Yes, I got some news for you, Kevin. We're in Massachusetts. That's a long way from Hawaii. <laughs> About as far away as I'd like to be from that can of spam. There is no <laughs> way we are eating that. Yeah, that's right. Fortunately, Ava and I took the liberty of preparing a real meal this year. Yes, mm. to celebrate, we have cooked a turkey breast, some mashed potatoes, and stuffing. Mm. Green beans, mm. cranberry sauce, and some real corn. Excuse me, cooked? Don't you mean to say that you heated up these prepared dishes? <laughs> Either way, you owe us twelve dollars. Oh, okay. Oh, that, that's at the top of my budget, but I'm starving. Oh, I almost forgot the Christmas music. We can't have a proper Friendsgiving without holiday music. 
fine as long as we don't have to make paper snowflakes after we mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a yeah. fire hazard. <laughs> oh, there's nothing better than this Christmas song right here. Silent Night. It's your favorite, huh? Yeah, it is. My Uncle Herbie used to sing it for our family every Christmas Eve. He passed away a few years ago, but every time I hear it, I picture him sitting in my father's armchair, singing it straight from his heart. That's a nice story. I'm pretty sure I know what Randy's favorite Christmas song is, Dominic the Donkey. Uh, also, interestingly, because it reminds him of his uncle. Oh, you are yeah. so funny, <laughs> so Kevin. Handsome. And you know what? That's still better than your favorite. It's Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer, right? It's so it's so beautifully captures the spirit of Christmas. Hey, that, you know? That's not even funny, bro. I, my grandmother was a wonderful woman, and she never saw that reindeer coming. <laughs> oh! oh, why is it we can never have a serious conversation with you guys? Well, around? you know, I'm not all Dominic the donkey. I'm I'm kind of an expert on Christmas traditions, actually. This oh, is going to really? involve car antlers. Okay, okay. Some of us are more sophisticated than that, Kevin. Did you know? That Polish Americans spread hay under the kitchen floor and under the tablecloth to remind them of the stable and a manger. When they set their table for Christmas dinner, they set two extra places for Mary and the Christ child. I have never heard that one before. Well, what about the old Mexican legend about a young boy named Pablo who was on his way to visit the village nativity scene when he realized he didn't have a gift for baby Jesus. He gathered some old branches along the side of the road and brought them to the church. The other kids, they made fun of him, but when he laid the leaves at the manger, a star-shaped flower appeared on each branch with bright red petals. It was the first poinsettia. (laughs) Who knew? We had a Christmas scholar within our midst. Yes, you're welcome. Yeah, those are both wonderful stories, but nothing compares to the original manger story. How baby Jesus was wrapped in swaddling clothing and laid in a manger because there was no room for him and Mary and Joseph at the inn. But we we would have found room for them. Well, you bet we would have. And while shepherds kept watch over their flock that night, an angel appeared to them, telling them not to be afraid, that he was there to bring good tidings of great joy because Christ the Lord had been born. No matter how many times I hear that story, I still get goosebumps. Really? What about Pablo? Come on, Pablo was a pretty good story too, right? Yeah, sure, Randy. Mm, And then the three wise men appeared. Three? Can you imagine even finding one of those today? Oh, 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 it would be a Christmas miracle. Sick burn, Eva. Good afternoon, Ava. Good afternoon. I was hoping to run into you today. I have a story I think you're just going to love. Really? I think so. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but Mr. Gilmet has been singing your praises to any of the staff who will listen to him. Mr. Gilmet actually speaks. (laughs) Not often, that's for sure, but it seems you've touched his heart. He says that he enjoyed the finest afternoon he's had in years last week when you visited with him in the yard. He did? (laughs) We only sat under the willow tree for an hour or so. He started humming an old tune that I remember from my grandmother, so I hummed along with him. That was it. I I don't think we exchanged more than half a dozen words with each other. But you shared your time with him, Ava, which is more than his own family has given him in years. They don't come? No. I didn't didn't know. Yeah. That's, That's really sad. Well, after last week, it's not as sad as it used to be. Because now he has you. Thanks for sharing that with me. It really means a lot. I knew it would. Are you seeing Mrs. Lacombe today? Yes, I am. Well, she'll be very happy about that. I spoke with her this morning, and she was going on like an over-caffeinated auctioneer, so I think she could use an (laughs) audience. (laughs) Well, then that's what I'll be. Hello, Mrs. Lacombe? Oh. Hi. I'm not sure if you remember me, but I'm Ava. Is it okay if I sit with you for a little bit? Oh, that would be lovely, sweetheart. You say we've met? 
just briefly. Um, I was hoping to spend some more time with you today. Oh, sit right here.